All right, time for another speculation. This time, I would like to make it who is potentially my favorite character in League of Legends, but then I decided that maybe I would like to wait until I find out when their region will be on uh, coming to Runeterra in the first place, and account that as of now, it's not a thing. So I decided to go with someone else who I really enjoy as Wukong. <laughs> so. He is actually kind of the reason I got into League of Legends in the first place. I didn't want to play. I seen him. I was like, I love Monkey King. I love normally whatever kind of ideas are made up of the uh, story, the legend of the Monkey King, I should say. So, my journey is only beginning. Wukong is, uh, I'm just going to read his biography. I don't care about that part. He's a Vastaya. He's a kind of monkey-looking human thing. Uh, so, within Ionia's magical forest dwells a tribe of Astaya known as the Shiman. A cautious people, they see life as an evolutionary climb to wisdom. Upon death, they believe they become stones, returning to the soil to become or to begin the climb of life anew. Impulsive, clever, and easily bored, Young Kong never had much in common with the other Shiman. For countless years, they endured his pranks, until the day he arrived in a panic, insisting that a great elemental dragon has come to burn their woodland home. But Kong only chuckled as his tribe began to flee. Realizing he had fooled them again, or whatever, uh, and with their patience finally wearing thin, <laughs> the shaman named him Outcast. Kong, for his part, was ambivital. Ambivalent, what, what, what? Ambivalent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that means like, okay, like sure, sounds good. He would seek out people with a better sense of humor. Living as something as a charlatan, he claimed he proclaimed himself the Monkey King, and often challenged mortals to duels or games of cunning. He claimed to be an un uh, to be undefeated until he crossed the Noxian headsman in the hinterlands of Zion. Uh, the Noxon and his comrades, comrades chased the Monkey King deep into the uh, wilderness where he hid, only emerging again after the invaders left the shores of the first land for good. And in time, Kong saw the brutality Noxus had inflicted upon his homeland. He set out to meet the fable uh, combat masters of Wuju, but found that their village had been annihilated. The only living soul was a man sitting quietly along the ruin, among the ruins. So, Kong challenged him to a good natural fight. New nature. In a single motion, the man stood, knocked the Vestalia down, then resumed his meditation. For weeks, Kong returned again and again, determined to fight this doorman. But the, Kong, the Monkey King was always outmaneuvered, no matter if he approached from behind, above, or below. The warrior could sense whenever Kong was about to attack, even when the Vestalia tried to distract him with hilarious jokes and he somehow knew not to drink his tea when Kong laced it with stupefying spirits. Eventually, the king, or the monkey king, knelt, kneeled, knelt? Is that, is knelt a word? Before the man, and begged to learn his ways. Kong wanted to be the greatest warrior, but he also sought something more. He just couldn't put, quite put into words. The man saw Kong's humility, and knew the Vestaya was ready. He introduced himself as Yi, the last man of Wuju, and agreed to train Kong in its virtues of discipline and patience. He could help channel Kong's recklessness and, impulsive, and impulsiveness into a lethal swift, lethally swift and surprising fighting technique. The two grew to respect each other, yet Yi refused to speak much of his past, or why he would not leave the ruined village. Kong made a proposition. The two would engage in a friendly sparring bout. If Kong won, he had to reveal why he'd stop fight. He'd stop fighting, and Yi prevailed. If Yi prevailed, <laughs> Kong wouldn't speak for four full seasons. That's hard for Wu Kong, because I mean, I'm I know I'm like Wu Kong, and I can't shut the fuck up. Uh, Yi eagerly accepted. He was like, "Hell yeah, I'm gonna shut you up for four seasons. That's amazing." When Kong had arrived at Wuju. He crept through a field of smoke poppies. 
and he and he lured his master back there now. Each time he attacked, the agitated flowers would burst around him, until finally he struck out through the uh, growing haze at what he believed was Kong, but instead hit a straw decoy. Kong seized his opportunity and grappled Yi to the ground. Finally, Yi told Kong the truth. He and his fellow disciples had gone to defend Ionia during the war, bringing the wrath of Noxus down upon Wuju in turn. He blames himself for the death of every last villager and watches over the ruins in penance. This, Kong realized, was what he sought. Although his tribe had cast him out, he wanted to defend the Shiman, who had sheltered him for so long and set him on the path to wisdom and enlightenment. <clears throat> Proud of his student, Yi also felt a renewed sense of purpose and granted Kong an enchanted staff crafted by the legendary weaponsmith Doran, a new honorific reserved only for the brightest students of Wuju. From that day forward, he was known as Wukong. Though the war was long over, Noxus' influence continued to defy... Oh, defile? <laughs> Uh, Ionia, roads have been carved through the ancient forests, self-styled tax collectors, hound peaceful folk who have nothing left to give, and great festivals of renewal have been si slowly declining year after year. But the great warriors Wu Kong and Master Yi are ready. Side by side, they roam the first lands, resolve to combat injustice and hatred wherever they find. I read that way weird. Resolve to combat justice and hatred wherever they are fine. Jeez, I can't talk. Anyways. Here we have my ideas of what could happen if a Wukong gets slapped into Legend of Rendere. So, Wukong, obviously. Uh, mana cost 5 could be good. Sounds roughly like a time for Garen to be placed, but uh, he has his own whole shebang that is pretty powerful in a way. So, his power is only 2, so that sounds weak, obviously. Health 4, compared to Garen, who is at 5-5, five, five, that doesn't sound strong, especially because his keyword is not regeneration, like Garen's is, because Garen doesn't freaking die. Uh, keyword, Wuju style, which we'll get to that later. When Wuju battles a unit, when Wuju, what the hell? When Wu Kong, I should have just put Kong, because now I'm going to get myself confused every time I see that. Oh, that's why I did that. Okay, whatever, fine, you know, life is on. When Wu battles a unit, create Smoke Poppies. It's a skill. So Smoke Poppies, create a clone in place of a battling unit, like a standalone, or stand united, sorry. Uh, clones have zero power and equal health as copied character. It is ephemeral, though, also. Uh, so when the clone dies, last breath, deal one damage to the battling uh, unit and adjacent units too. So the units that are beside the unit that kills, uh, or just attacks, if, even if it doesn't kill it, which, because you know, uh, this one per se, like, because obviously it's his skill here, uh, Wukong would be copying himself. He would get four, the copy would have four HP, so if they're only getting three, three HP, uh, if this wasn't an ephemeral card, they wouldn't kill it, right? But since it's battling, regardless, it's an ephemeral card, it's dying. So when it dies, it deals one damage to the card that it was battling, and then one damage to each card next to it. Uh, potentially, you know, if, say it's a 2-1 or whatever, they're dead. But you're going to know how to, you know, you're, when you're playing against Wukong, you're going to know that that's what's going to happen when you attack Wukong. you got to make sure that you, you, you don't have adjacent uh, units that will die with one hit before combat, especially... Well, Maybe you want to die before combat if you put them adjacent because you have because uh, Wukong has another uh, unit that would have just done damage, but now they're not going to do anything because there is a unit there that's just going to flat out die before combat to block damage. Still, so regardless, that still works. But uh, point being, how low how Wukong levels up is he has to see you create an X amount of ephemeral copies. I don't know what number that should be. Again. Uh, not the dev. I don't know for sure what they would ever do with the, that idea and how how hard it would be to get a five or six ephemeral copies on the field. Well, 
uh, Yi's, or not Yi, sorry, whoa, whoa, what? Master, Master what? Uh, well, Wukong is on the field, so, like, because he has to see it. So he has to be down on the ground, too. Down on the field to level up ever. Uh, okay. So when Wukong levels up, he no longer creates that smoke poppy to protect himself during combat, or... I feel like I didn't even go over that enough, honestly. So, like, so if Wukong is in combat, well, I guess I'll explain it in the, in the, uh, examples, but still. So, okay, so he no longer creates a smoke poppy upon battle with a unit. Instead, Wuk if Wukong uh, survives the attack or the block, it doesn't even matter as long as, as long as it's battling during a battle. If he survives a battle, he creates a cyclone instead of creating his uh, smoke poppies that he had created prior to leveling up. Cyc <laughs> cyclone reads, recall all battling enemies. So, um, if he kills them... They're obviously not going to be recalled because they're dead, but every other unit will die. <laughs> or what? Will be sent to the enemy's hand. Die. This is a skill, though. Just like Poppy, by the way, you can you you can deny it. You can kill Wukong before to stop it from going off. And anything like that will will disrupt this instantly. So as powerful as it is. It can be cancelled, quite simply. Uh, so now we come over to this new keyword I've thought of. It's not super creative or anything, but... Wuju style. If you have an ally Master Yi, start round, Ma Wukong gains elusive. Master Yi. Uh, so, Wukong's... Uh, Wukong spell. I didn't go over Galio's spell, but I will actually talk about that right when I'm finished. Right at the end of this here, where I'm ta done talking about Wukong, since I don't want to just break it up and get confused when I'm trying to talk about which one. So, he has his spell. It is literally the same thing as his skill, except uh, it his skill only actually sets off during him being attacked, or blocked, or whatever, during combat. This can only be set off during combat, the spell, but it uh, doesn't have to be on an enemy that's actually in combat. So if combat's, if battle is, ha is happening, say you're getting attacked by a unit, or it doesn't even matter honestly, and you can then use uh, smoke poppies on a on an ally to then create a clone and put the clone wherever you would like to block. If that makes any sense, then. Then when it dies to its blocker, it would obviously do one damage to the blocker and one damage to each of the adjacent units next to it. So, if you have, let's say you have a clone down and they have a four, four, four. They're all, they're all, they're all four power. All of them doesn't matter their health. They all have four power. So you're gonna, you're you're technically gonna want to put uh, them down in the middle and stop the middle attack. So the first one will be doing damage to you, but let's say the last person in line, so there's only three of them, the last person in line would do, uh, would have one HP. That, that one is not going to get to attack anymore because when the ephemeral copy di uh, clone dies, it will kill that card before it gets to attack. Unlike the first card, the initial one starting off the attack, it said, let's say its power is four, it will do four to you, and if its health is one, right after attacking, uh, the clone will then kill it. So it'll still get to attack, but we're not the last card. And also, you're blocking the attacker that you're blocking. Obviously, it's to two. So it, depending on what you're blocking uh, with afterward, and if the first one doesn't do much damage, but if they have it set up to a certain way, it could be pretty powerful. Especially if you missed it with, mixed it with like a uh, funsmith or something for the extra skill increase, because that would that would mean that it would be doing plus one uh, on top of that, so plus two. So like, uh, pff, let's say it's a Z. Let's say it's a Z. You just killed both Zeds. Uh, the second Z didn't get to attack either because Z's clone comes out after him, so you just put it in front of Z. Z would then die, and also, but that would only be <laughs> that would only be in certain situations where you have like you know funsmith. Not many people run small run funsmith. I don't. Nobody does. <laughs> Um, okay, so... I 
Example one, um, so an enemy, an ally, sorry, gets challenged. I put my instead of buy. I was super confused there. Buy an enemy unit. You can smoke poppies to remove them from the battle in place of a clone. Uh, but you don't recall them. So the, if the person, like, just like Wukong too, if, uh, if Wukong is attacking, he would then be put back into safety on the board while the clone then takes over. So it's not recalling, it's more of like a stand united with somebody else that is already not taking damage, already not blocking. But you're creating that card first and swapping places with them. So, you know, during, during combat, in a way, Wukong can't die to anything physical, but, he can all, but it also always stops him from doing any kind of damage at all, too. But it creates a clone for him to level up. So it's all kind of leading to a place the whole way time, the whole time, but they can still just drop him with a crap ton of different things in the end, honestly. Two mystic shots within his life right away. It's pretty simple. But that's that is still a, that's two spells that you don't want you might not want to have to use. You could single combat him too. That would be simple. Or even whirling death, as I had come to say in a second here. So example two, uh, Wukong attacks with an ally unit, uh, also attacking, sorry. Uh, the enemy only blocks Wukong, Wukong's skill triggers, they can deny it, or they can outright kill Wu with single combat or whirling death to cancel as well. Like it doesn't matter, anything they do, I don't know why I said attacking with I guess I just because he only blocks Wu is what I said that for, but yeah, the, the point being that if Wu Kong is blocked, Wu Kong then gets put back onto the bench with his clone in place of what he was where he was attacking or defending. So in a way, Wu Kong never engages in any kind of combat because he's just too cunning. He's just too freaking cunning. He's just smart. Uh, right up until he feels powerful enough and Cyclones their ass or their forget off the field. And like this would combo super well with Yasuo because he is also from Ionia. Uh, and recalling every single one of the enemy cards to their hand would potentially kill them all if Yasuo is already leveled up. So that's pretty powerful too. Especially if Wukong, like you can, you if they attack with all six units and you put Wukong in front of the first one, block it, don't kill it, and survive the damage, you send all six of them back up to their hand before, before they attack. And if Yasuo is on the board and he's leveled up, they're and they have 5 HP or whatever, they all die. They don't go to their hand, they die. That's, about, that's, that, that's insane. That would be a combo that I wouldn't even want to see, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, they can still deny it if they use to stop him from going back uh, to going back off the field. Uh, they can outright kill him with single combat or even whirling death to cancel as well. There's, there's a super simple amount of ways that you can stop him from Denying combat, I suppose, with him. Uh, using a copy effect adds towards Wukong's progress to level up as long as it's an ephemeral. So anything like Zed, Zed attacking, if he, when Zed attacks and creates his copy, uh, that is not a clone, but it is a copy of a card, and it's ephemeral. So that works toward him, because it does not say, uh, I've seen you create clones, I've seen you create ephemeral copies. Um... Fading Memory also creates a copy of a card uh, into your hand, but when you place it down, that card would then be an ephemeral copy, and Wukong would get one off of that. Uh, Splinter Soul is the same thing, except it's a 1-1, one, one, so like if you were to split Wukong from a 2-4 to a copy of a 1-1, one, one, that's still a copy clone of him. You would still, because it's ephemeral also, that would still give him a 1-up of his level. Even Blood for Blood, if you use a Blood for Blood on an Ephemeral card, card that does not die, when you place that Ephemeral card down again, it will be a copy now. So you can, that would also add up to Wukong's level. A lot of ways that you can do it without just using, uh, uh, where is it? Oh, right here. Smoke Poppies. You don't have to use Smoke Poppies, and it doesn't only have to be Wukong's uh, Smoke Poppy skills either to help him level up. So, final uh, example, I guess. Wukong is leveled up and battles a single enemy. Wukong kills his target, and there's no other targets for him to kill. Targets for uh, Wu to, uh, to uh, recall, sorry. That's the end. Nothing happens, you know, because the target he was fighting is dead. 
uh, this skill has nothing to target. This skill doesn't even go. Doesn't even happen. If uh, Wukong survives, and so did the enemy, you recall them. If they died, but there's five other enemies, recall them all. There just has to be another attacking. If Wukong survives, and there is still surviving attacking units, they're gone. They're recalled back to hand. Pretty much all right. So I gotta slip this in real quick because I did forget to. Well, not forget to. I want to update my idea of Galio. So in mobile instead, since they actually added a mobile into the patch notes recently uh, for patch 1.0, the mobile has a, is a keyword on a character. So that is perfect because obviously, why would Galio be able to block if he is dormant? So mobile is exactly what he is until he gets his attack power of dirtiness and then goes ahead and destroys somebody right away with one nice hit. Wherever that even is, I don't even remember. Over here, I guess. Um, and also, his spell. Because I totally forgot to even include the thought of a spell. So, nullifying Petrosite. To remove... Uh, so, total reverse of purify. This is exactly the opposite. If someone purifies your card, this is the time to do it, to use this, but it is double the mana. Because it, it's way stronger. It's way stronger. I don't want to keep looking at myself. So, where, where Purify gets rid of it, it's not the only thing that uh, Nullifying Petrosite will stop. It'll also say somebody drops down a smallest thing like, uh, what are those spiders called? Scurry or whatever the hell the damn thing is where it reduces everyone's attack by one and gives all the attacks on your side. Even that small thing, let's say you wanted your guy to have an extra plus one or I don't know. That would be it's a horrible example. Let's say you're frostbitten. <laughs> if you get frostbitten and someone you and you use a nullifying petrocyte on that frostbitten card, you're getting all your attack back. So they've just wasted a frostbite. And the best part about it is you can't deny a frostbite because it's at burst speed. So this is aftermath. This is like, oh, you've already burst speed uh, frostbite uh, in this case one of my cards now on account that i wasn't able to deny it or have any control over the effect of you frostbiting my card at the starting of it i can now nullify that effect totally getting rid of it uh, yeah it's say someone use puts ephemeral on a champion you can remove ephemeral from that champion or ephemeral from any follower that doesn't spawn and have it written on their card already yeah, and that's pretty much what I think Galio could have as a spell in a nutshell, along with uh, Immobile for sure, because Immobile, he doesn't need to be doesn't need to be blocking. He's doing so much blocking with spells when he's on the board anyways. Alright, well, so um, I think that's roughly all I got for Wukong. And as you could imagine, you know who I'm going to be talking about next. <laughs>